Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, this video webcast is about the Web 7.0 Trust Registry Framework and a particular concept called Trust Registration Documents. This was a, a talk given at the uh, Internet Identity Workshop on day three. And since um, Thursday, it has evolved into a more general concept of how to represent arbitrary collections of typed relationships using DID documents. My name is Michael Herman. I'm the founder and chief architect of the Web 7.0 Foundation. And this is being recorded in Westport, uh, Washington on the Pacific Coast. So briefly, what is Web 7.0? Web 7.0 is a secure, message-based, decentralized operating system that underpins a unified software and hardware ecosystem. And that ecosystem is used for building resilient, trusted, decentralized systems using decentralized identifiers, DIGCOM agents, and verifiable credentials. The Web 7.0 Foundation is a federally incorporated Canadian nonprofit corporation, and it is chartered to support, promote, protect, and curate the Web 7.0 ecosystem. This includes operating system software standards and specifications, as well as other software and technology projects. Uh, some acknowledgements, of course, to the attendees at the very interactive uh, Internet Identity Workshop, uh, you know, day three talk uh, where I first presented these ideas. And a special thank you to Marcus from Danube Technology who attended um, who attended this talk and 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 I want to thank him for his vision and commitment to the did resolution specification his overall expertise in decentralized ecosystem technologies and his valued feedback on this talk so to introduce this concept of a trust registry framework and in particular the trust registry framework for web 7.0 um, I want to kind of set the stage. I want to go over a few concepts, um, general concepts, uh, before introducing uh, the trust registry framework. So on the left here, we have Alice. Alice is, you know, for all intents and purposes, a real person. And we need to differentiate Alice, the real person on the left, from her, her personification. Uh, her personification is a subject in a particular decentralized ecosystem. And personifications have dids, or to turn it around the other way, the thing that a did refers to is a person's personification. And associated with Alice's personification, this particular personification, because Alice can have multiple, multiple personifications and hence multiple identities, is Alice's trusted personal agent, in this case, a didcom agent. DIDCOM agents are known by their address. They're known by their service endpoints. Um, they're, they're named by their default service endpoints. So here we can see, for example, that um, Alice Allison's trusted personal agent lives at example.com colon 8080. And associated with Alice's agent may also be a wallet. Um, and here we see uh, Alice, Allison's wallet, and it has a did, it has an identity. Did colon wallet colon 111222333. What we're doing, trying to do in the trust registry framework, of course, is um, defining an ecosystem. Uh, what, what makes up an ecosystem? So, Traditionally, we think of an ecosystem as having a, a group of, of issuers, of identity issuers, uh, of verifiable credential issuers. Um, we think of verifiers on the right, and, and then we need to store information about these identities uh, in, in a DID registry. So those are the, the three kinds of agents, the three specializations we see depicted here. And although not all DID methods uh, require a verifiable data registry, I'm showing a data uh, verifiable data registry across the bottom here, just 
um, for completeness. So, you know, if we bring all this together, we have an ecosystem of methods like did colon person and an ecosystem of, of you know, trusted personal agents and wallets, verifiers and issuers. And in the trust registry, we're trying to specify for a particular ecosystem, what are the allowable methods? What are the registered issuers and the registered verifiers, the valid entities, operators, agents um, that comprise this ecosystem. And so all of these different entities have relationships. They have connections to the ecosystem. And it's these relationships that we're trying to encode um, in the trust registry. And in this particular talk, we found a way to encode them using did documents. So there you can see in green, I've labeled each of those blue lines as being a, a relationship. And these are the relationships we want to capture. So the question or the goal of this talk is how to represent arbitrary collections of typed relationships using did documents. So if what I've presented so far is a bit of a meta model, a bit of an abstract architecture reference model, um, here's a particular scenario. Here again, we show Alice the person up in the top left hand corner. And then sort of in the second column from the left, we see that Alice has multiple personifications, multiple personas. There's Alice Allison at the top. There's Alice Gamer, uh, the second from the top, and then Alice Athlete and Alice Chef. Each of her personifications has a different did, a different decentralized identifier, and, and they live in different method spaces, did method spaces. And Alice Allison's did colon person colon one, two, three, four, yeah, is part of the province of Savronia.ca ecosystem at the top there. And we can see that that's a, a method accepted uh, relationship. And on the far right, we can see that the province of Savronia.ca ecosystem has a, a couple of different verifiers that are they're officially you know, registered to be part of that ecosystem. If we go back to the far left, we see we've got a, a couple of issuers. There's ICANN issuer and Inky issuer. ICANN issuer can issue DIDs for DID colon person, and ICANN issuer can um, issue DIDs for DID colon GameStar. Inky issuer at the very bottom can issue DIDs for the DID colon sports person method space as well as the did colon professional method space. Those last three, GameStar, sports person, and professional chef, those are methods that are permissible or allowable um, in the professional's ecosystem. And the two verifiers, and two is just an arbitrary number, the two verifiers that are uh, permissioned or permissible within the professionals ecosystem are Barry uh, verifier and scary verifier. The last two uh, elements or objects I'm showing here in this relationship scenario is uh, Alice's wallet and, and Alice Allison's wallet, uh, which we've seen before at Alice's Alice chef's wallet. They're inside the ecosystem just because there's actually a lack of space on the slide, but uh, the implication is that they also have relationships with with their respective uh, ecosystem. So jumping uh, forward to an actual example of a solution, um, here we're showing a did colon person colon zero. So this is a, a slight extension to the um, did core specification. When you specify uh, member zero or 
uh, ID zero in a method space, you're referring to the method space itself and not a specific person in that method space. So we see that in line two. We've also added a purpose element here to say, what is the purpose of this did? Because we have traditional dids, which are just to provide information about a particular uh, subject associated with that identity. But here we actually have a, a more specialized, uh, somewhat specialized and somewhat generalized view um, of what this did document for us. So in the purpose, it says, this is a trust registration uh, did document and it's a trust registration uh, did document for a method of course what we're really interested in is trust registration documents for ecosystems and we'll see an example of that uh, in a moment but we see that it has a verification method and a key agreement just like before it has a a, ser a service element um, for the service endpoint associated with this method space and in reality, it might not even exist, but I'm just showing a service endpoint here for completeness. But below that, we see that there's something brand new, something called a relationship element. And this relationship element um, in the type in line 35 says, here are the ecosystems that this method, uh, did colon person, is accepted in. Um, so it's accepted in the did colon person ecosystem and the did colon ca dot Savronia ecosystem. And so this is the first instance, the first example of being able to encode arbitrary relationships uh, in did documents. So on the left side, think of we've got did colon person colon uh, zero the method. And on the right hand side, we have the Savronia.ca ecosystem. And the relationship that connects the left side to the right side is defined in this relationship element. It's defined, and in particular, it's given metadata. It's given a type. So the line that joins did colon person colon zero to the Savronia ecosystem is typed as ecosystem accepted. And this is in effect defining not just a single relationship, but two relationships. One between did colon person and the Savronia.ca ecosystem and another line or another relationship between did colon person um, and the did colon person ecosystem. And so that's all pretty cool. Further, we're going to look at sort of the metadata or schema description of a did document in Web 7.0. And somewhat for simplicity and somewhat in a desire not to stray too far from the uh, current did core specification, um, we've defined relationships to be exactly the same have exactly the same schema, exactly the same metadata as a service. And we can see here um, in Web 7.0, we define all of our objects using a, an abstract specification language called Trinity Specification Language or TSL. So taken right from the did core specification and the did document uh, property section of, of the official specification, it says that a, a did document is uh, all of these things. And um, at the bottom, you can see that a, a service is defined as a list of service maps. And if you look at the top, um, you can see um, that a service map is defined um, as you know this uh, comment string that's an optional extension we've added it has an id it has a type and it has a and it has a service endpoint and a service endpoint is just a list of strings so we're using the type to be the type of the relationship and we're using the list of strings that comprise a service endpoint um, to be the list of 
of, of elements, the list of objects um, that a particular subject has a relationship with. So it's not just about trust registry ecosystems. It's about being able to create arbitrary collections of arbitrary typed relationships using DID documents. So here we see uh, that extension and it was a simple. We just added one line to our abstract definition of a DID document, um, copy and pasted um, the service definition at the bottom and renamed it relationship. And that gave us all the capabilities we need for representing arbitrary type relationships in a DID document. So if we look at the bottom uh, portion of the trust registration document for the province of Seronia.ca, um, we can see starting in line, uh, you know, 26 to 32, uh, it's actually just scrolled off the top of the page there a little bit. But these are the methods that are accepted in the province of Seronia ecosystem. Did call in person. That matches that scenario we, we looked at. Uh, next, starting in uh, line 34, we have another relationship, and it's of type issuers accepted. And if you remember, the did for that one issuer on the far left-hand side was did colon org colon 111. Of course, all of these methods that are used in this example are, are hypothetical. If we go to line 41, we see another relationship defined, actually two relationships being defined, and it's the verifiers that are accepted by this Severonia ecosystem. So we can see that there's um, did colon org colon 444 and did colon org colon 666. Uh, that was two of the three verifiers on the far right hand side of the diagram. Next we see what are the VDRs, what are the verifiable data registries that are accepted? We only had a single verifiable data registry, so it's did colon VDR colon 00100203. What are the wallets accepted? And these aren't individual wallets, these are wallet implementations. And perhaps in the fullness of time, a better method uh, name like wallet implementation might be chosen. Um, but we only had, we had two instances of a wallet in our example scenario but they're both of the same uh, sort of make and model and that make and model of wallet was defined as did colon wallet colon one 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 two 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 three 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 at the very bottom um, we have the uh, did registry that's accepted as part of the province of Severonia ecosystem and there is only one and so it's did colon registry colon you know zero 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 So I dropped into code at this point, and I'm not going to show those, uh, but I've captured a few examples uh, in, the, in the screens that follow, and we've seen some examples already. So one thing I want to note is the equivalence of service elements in a DID document and relationship elements in a DID document. So here at the, in the top half of this example, I've got a service defined. Uh, this is uh, a totally unrelated example. This is using did documents for, um, for representing load balance, multiple load balanced uh, endpoints for a, a particular um, trusted personal agent. But the point here is it's a service element of type default if we look at line 24, type default load balanced and round robin. If we look at the relationship definition in, in uh, line 33, we can see that it's a, of type service default load balanced round robin. So relationships are in fact a, a generalization that can be used to represent, again, collections of arbitrary type relationships in DID documents. And the existing or prevailing service element 
actually just becomes a, a special type of relationship. So per, perhaps over the fullness of time, people will migrate from using services to using relationships because relationships give you a much broader capability for representing arbitrary typed relationships. Now, during the workshop, I showed a much broader range of code examples um, of trust uh, registration documents, um, some for ecosystems, some for methods, um, one for an issuer and each one of those is owned and declared by the respective controller the controller of their did document and of course there's no universal authority there's no centralized entity trying to correlate or make sure these match up each entity or each element um, in a decentralized system is the controller of its own document and is free to declare themselves uh, any way they choose. So we need this concept of trust registration context. And what, which one is in effect um, for, let's say, a particular, uh, if somebody's asked to, to uh, issue a particular did method uh, using a particular verifier particular issuer in a particular ecosystem well it's going to be the intersection of all of those relationships so what is whatever is the common denominator intersection of their respective trust registration uh, documents aka did documents is will determine what the effective what the effective context is um, I've already kind of highlighted this as an example this is just a a sidebar this isn't related to trust registries at all but the idea of using did documents uh, syntax and and, ex and and extending the semantics of a did document um, in this case it's did colon person colon 1234 is the ID in line 2 and um, that person has a trusted personal agent and that's just defined by the service element down in line 20 and we can see that in lines 26 to 29 that there's multiple service endpoints um, defined so th this is the ability to create an enterprise class load balance high availability solution for a particular instance of a did um, of a did agent a didcom agent a trusted personal agent and so we see the four URLs there. And then the, what, what, what is the key to uh, how these are intended to be used? We have to look at the type in line 24. Default, load balanced, and round robin. There may be de uh, default load balance in some other scheme for doing uh, the load balancing, such as response driven or um, those sorts of things. But this is just showing how did documents are much more than they were first envisioned to be they can be used for load balanced endpoints and in the larger part of this presentation we can see how they can be used as uh, trust registry documents so if you have any questions you can tweet them to at freddie architect on twitter uh, freddie architect is the the mascot for Web 7.0 for the Web 7.0 decentralized operating system. And uh, Freddie monitors that uh, his account frequently and, and will respond to any of your answers. So I want to thank you for uh, listening to uh, this talk for the last, last 25 minutes and uh, look forward to hearing uh, uh, your feedback on how to use did documents to implement trust registries using existing technology, existing software, existing protocols without wanting or needing to reinvent the whole world. Um, and more importantly, being able to use did documents to represent arbitrary relationships, arbitrary typed relationships within uh, decentralized systems. Thank you.